Good morning, my friends. It's Dana Corsello, the Vicar of the Cathedral, and so happy to be with you on this Valentine's Day, February 14th. I hope that you have a beautiful day today. Let me begin with these opening words. Beloved, we are called to be your children. May we delight in your love. Beloved, we are called to be your children. May we delight in your love. Let us pray. Dear saint and glorious martyr, teach us to love unselfishly and to find great joy in giving. Enable all true lovers to bring out the best in each other. Let them love each other in God. Amen. And that was a prayer to St. Valentine, as is this one. O glorious advocate and protector, St. Valentine, look with pity upon our wants. Hear our requests, attend to our prayers, relieve by your intercession the miseries under which we labor, and obtain for us the divine blessing that we may be found worthy to join you in praising the Almighty for all eternity through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, it should not be any surprise which scripture I've chosen to read for this St. Valentine's Day. And I'm going, going to share with you um, something that I read that I thought was really interesting about this saint that we call Valentine. So this, of course, is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I think you know how the end of this uh, chapter ends. The greatest of these is love. Now, for those of us who are married or in partnerships or long-term partnerships and have spouses, you know, it says love is kind, it's not envious, boastful, arrogant, rude, it does not insist on its own way, it's not, in, well, of course, it's all of those things. I mean, we just have to admit it. It's all of those things. Um, but it does not mean that God's love and true love exists between the person. So I did some research because I had forgotten who St. Valentine was. St. Valentine was a third century Roman priest, a priest, late 200s Roman priest. Um, and the origin of the holiday is really not romantic. It's not romantic. So let me just tell you a little bit about it. I read that this Roman Catholic priest by the name of Frank O'Gara he serves at the White Friars Church in Dublin, Ireland. So he tells this story about the man behind the holiday. As I said, he was a Roman priest when there was an emperor, Claudius, who persecuted the church at that particular time, Claudius, the Roman emperor. And Claudius had an edict that prohibited the marriage of young people. And this was based on the hypothesis that unmarried soldiers fought better than married soldiers because married soldiers might be afraid of what might happen to them or their wives if they died. I think that's reasonable enough, but I had no idea that he issued this edict. And so at that time, um, what ended up happening is that the church believed that marriage was sacred, of course, between one man and one woman, and that it was to be encouraged. And so this presented a problem to the Christian church of what to do about this edict. Um, the idea of encourage, encouraging them to marry within the Christian church 
was what Valentine was all about. And he secretly married men and women, young men and women, despite this edict. And what is so sad is he, Valentine was eventually caught, imprisoned, and tortured for performing marriage ceremonies against the command of Emperor Claudius II. And then there are legends that happened during his time in prison. And one of the men who was to judge him in line with the Roman law at the time was a man named Asterius. And Asterius had a daughter who was blind. And he was supposed to have prayed and healed the young girl with such an astonishing effect that Asterius himself became a Christian as a result. In the year 269 AD, Valentine was sentenced to this three-part execution of beating, stoning, and finally decapitation, all because of his stand on Christian marriage. And the story goes that the last words he wrote were in a note to Asterius' daughter. And this inspired today's romantic missives. He signed it from yours, Valentine, from your Valentine. Now, I thought that story, I, I don't know about you, you probably already knew it, um, but I did not know that. So I, I actually find that really fascinating. And also if you Google who St. Valentine was, there were many, um, the name Valentinius means honor and strength and you know so a lot of men during that time were named valentine so there were other roman priests named valentine so i think there are like eight roman catholic priests named valentine at that time but i think historically he's probably the most legitimate okay now i found two really interesting little quotes or quips about love that i wanted to share with you because both of them just kind of got me right here so here's the first one, and this one is just something I saw on Facebook, but I took a screenshot because I think it's so good, and it is this. The problem is everyone looking for unconditional love, carrying a bag, oh sorry, let me start over. The problem is everyone looking for unconditional love carries a bag full of conditions. Isn't that good? The problem is everyone looking for unconditional love, they're already carrying a bag of conditions. <laughs> you know, come on, right? I think that's so true. And then the second one, this one's beautiful. This one's from Khalil Gibran, the philosopher poet. And this one, I'll have to repeat this one, but just so you understand it. And he wrote this, between what is said and not meant, and what is meant and not said, most of love is lost. Oh, isn't that sort of heartbreaking? Let me re repeat it. Between what is said and not meant, and what is meant and not said, most of love is lost. So I thought those were two really nice things to think about on this Valentine's Day. Not sure you celebrated or not, but I'm hoping you found something um, worthwhile. So let me continue now with our prayers. God, our creator and lover, fill our hearts with your love. God, our savior and Lord, fill our home with your love. God, our sustainer and advocate, fill our community with your love. God, the Holy Trinity, fill all the world with your love. And so now, my friends, what is it that you need today? What or for whom are you praying? Let's lift those people. So much to pray for. And now will you join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let us end with this prayer. 
O God most holy, in Jesus Christ, you have laid a foundation upon which to build our lives. Help us to follow your perfect law of love, that we may fulfill it and observe it to the end. Amen. So, my friends, as I began, beloved, we are called to be your children. May we delight in your love. Beloved, we are called to be your children. May we delight, and I will add, in your unconditional love. And so, my friends, may you be blessed today. May those whom you love, may they be protected and taken care of. And may God's love shower you this day and always.